Welcome back to this series of Black Hat Fast Chats. Terry Sweeney here, contributing editor to Black Hat. And joining us now is John Muirhead Gold, solution architect with HID. John, thanks for joining us for this Fast Chat today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Terry. We're excited uh, to talk with you today. Well, uh, appreciate you doing this. Uh, we are uh, here to talk a bit about uh, PKI as a service, but also the certificates and revocation functions therein. Um, let's just start with some context building first. Um, public key infrastructure as a service is a kind of cloud-based uh, managed encryption service. Um, for viewers who may be new to this concept, talk a bit about how PKI as a service works and what some of its drivers are. Yeah, it's it's automating the issuance of enterprise public and private certificates through a, a single platform, which reduces the risks of certificate management and the associated outages that go with it. It's kind of like moving the alphabet soup of public key infrastructure to someone else's bowl. All right. Um, well, as enterprises grow and their 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 IT systems uh, grow along with it. Um, the uh, IT resources devoted to manage all that generally remain uh, flat in comparison. I, I think that's that's fair to say in this uh, day of uh, budget crunches. From your perspective, how long is it going to take to migrate from, say, something like on-premises PKI to something that is more cloud-based? Yeah, it's a good question, Terry. I mean, uh, every enterprise is, of course, a bit unique, but there are some commonalities. Um, really, the complexity of the existing setup and the level of executive support are the two main factors that come to mind. If the project is high on the corporate agenda, if it's got the right level of attention with the, the key uh, participants and stakeholders and that uh, is sustained over time, then it can be completed relatively quickly. We've uh, seen enterprises make that initial migration in a matter of days. And uh, for most organizations, it involves identifying quick wins to build momentum and any mission critical elements that could be a little more complicated to move. How, how intensive is is the training and uh, maybe maybe more to the point, how steep is that learning curve? Yeah, uh, most of the learning curve has to do with understanding the underlying technologies that are used yeah. For automation of public key infrastructure. Um, the, the main components that we look at are not like your AES and RSA algorithms. That's a lot of the time just too deep into, into hard cryptography. Uh, we recommend exploring things like uh, Windows Client Certificate Enrollment uh, specification. It was open sourced by Microsoft over 15 years ago. And some of these other protocols that have become standard over time. Uh, ACME automated certificate management environment uh, for automating server certificates and uh, SCAP simple certificate enrollment protocol for automating a lot of uh, device and, and user certificates in, a, in like a BYOD uh, type of setting. We're also seeing a lot of um, uptake on Cisco's enrollment over secure transport protocol, which is being used to secure a lot of network gear. Thanks for that. Um, if, if, if I'm a SOC professional watching this, um, I uh, quite likely am wondering um, how does the migration from an on-prem to a cloud PKI work when I have PKI certificates that are expiring at different rates? How, how does that work exactly? Yeah, it's it's actually straightforward. Uh, the The main item is to issue the new certificates before the old ones expired, making sure that they're installed and functional. And in doing so, uh, you can ensure a, a seamless transition without compromising security. Right. Um, in that same vein, um, if if my organization has a, a bring your own device policy, for example, um, uh, PKI may work well for these these hybrid work models. 
but is BYOD something I can use for devices uh, that are operating outside of the, the, the Windows Microsoft ecosystems? Yeah, absolutely. Um, public key infrastructure and public key infrastructure as a service is highly adaptable. It works well in these types of models. Uh, and there's a bunch of different integrations that will work with the public key infrastructure as a service uh, that that make use of that SCEP protocol that we were talking about uh, earlier for a moment. Uh, there's solutions like uh, Microsoft Intune, Jamf, MobileIron, AirWatch, all of those uh, technology integrations use things like SCAP to manage both Windows and iOS and other non-Windows devices effectively. Right. Um, John, I'm going to ask you to look into your crystal ball. Um, uh, quantum computing is, is uh, I can't even say it's on the horizon. It feels like it's quite a bit closer than that. But from where you sit, um, is is PKI as a service, is, is it crypto resilient in, in this age of of quantum computing. Um, just, just wondering when uh, post quantum certs will will be a thing. C can you uh, can you weigh in there? Yeah. Now, I, I, it's it's anyone's guess to be completely uh, transparent with you, Terry. Um, but I think it's I, I tend to agree with you. I think it's a lot closer than most of us can believe or even imagine, and that each month that goes by increases the need for resilience and crypto agility. Uh, at HID Global, we're actively investigating hardware security modules that are designed to be compatible with post-quantum cryptographic algorithms, and these modules are part of our strategy to ensure that our PKI as a service remains resilient in the new age of quantum computers. Right. Well, uh, we sure appreciate you joining us for this Black Hat Fast Chat. Thanks for demystifying some of the issues around PKI as a service, as well as the certificates and revocation functions. Thank you, John. Yeah. Thanks, Terry. Happy to do it. We've been talking with John Muirhead Gold, Solution Architect with HID. This has been Terry Sweeney for Black Hat. Thanks for joining us for this latest in the Black Hat Fast Chat series. We'll see you next time.